All righty. Welcome to another episode of Time Out with Doc and Caveman. As always, you are here with Dr. Fantasy and my co-host, the Fantasy Caveman. Before we start, make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts. You'll get an update anytime we post any NBA content, content so make sure you guys subscribe. Today, we're continuing to roll with our NBA prospect profiles Today's player of interest is Franz Wagner, who was a saw that. Yes, that is how you say it. He's German. And I learned that as I was watching more highlights. I watched a few games with him playing um, at Michigan last season, but it is Franz Wagner. He was a sophomore last year at Michigan, 6'9", 220 pounds, a forward primarily. Last year as a sophomore, he averaged 12 and a half points, six and a half rebounds, three assists. He was 47.7% from the field, 83.5% from the free throw line, and then 34% from three. Caveman, do you have a fun fact about Franz Wagner? Yes. So one of his assistant coaches at Michigan called him the rain man of basketball. I'm not exactly sure if that, I mean, obviously that's a compliment, but I'm not exactly sure what to do with that information. Uh, but he is the rain man of basketball. So I would like to think that's pretty high praise. Yeah, I mean, so essentially his coach is calling him a basketball savant. So I guess he has a high IQ. That's the way that I would read it. Yeah, he has a high, which is actually part, kind of part of the, one of his strengths, but. Uh, I think the biggest thing uh, that you notice with with him is that he has uh, some great defensive versatility. He can guard multiple positions very well, and we know at the next level that that is very important to be able to switch up. And he can not say he not saying he can guard like elite speed point guards but he can guard most twos you know through fours maybe some undersized fives at the next level so that's going to be that's going to be very uh that's going to be very key for for him as well and there's with that versatility i got i think i got a couple of good uh comparisons when we get to it but uh going along with uh his defense, he held he held opponents to 34% shooting, which I think is at least pretty decent. I mean, putting it kindly, I think that's not bad at all. Uh, and then the fi- and then the final thing that I really noticed is that I kind of and I talk about this with several prospects, and that is his uh pick and roll play and he does very well in the pick and roll on both ends of the court. Like mm-hmm. he does a good job defending it and then he does a good job cutting on the offensive end or or doing whatever is needed of him when he's involved in the pick and roll. So if you have that pick and roll IQ, that is only going to enhance your ability to be uh involved uh involved at the next level yeah and i think when i watch him a lot of it is about just his versatility and iq i mean that's a lot of what his strengths are he seems to have great positioning on both sides of the floor if you watch his highlight his defensive highlights when he's defending the pick and roll he knows how to get around a screen. It's actually really impressive for his size, and it was kind of cool to watch. He And that's going to be very valuable, as you said, at the next level. But when you look at it, he's just kind of pretty good at everything. I don't know if he has any, except his defensive versatility, if he has any traits where he's elite necessarily. But honestly, he's just pretty good all around the board. I mean, with his size... And his length, he can, you know, some scouts say he'll be able to play small ball five in the league. So he can really play 
one through five, depending on the system, because he has great vision and he's a pretty good playmaker for his size. Uh, and you'll see throughout the highlights, he makes some really nice passes. Um, he's a pretty solid rebounder. He doesn't turn over the ball very much. He makes the right cuts. He you know, sets secondary picks. I mean, he does everything kind of that you look for in a player. You know, do I see elite traits that'll make him an all-star? I don't, I'm a little hesitant to say that, but really there's not, when we talk about weaknesses, he has some, but I don't know. Like he's just very, he's a solid player all around the board. That's why he's a very odd one to scout for me. And I personally struggled coming up with comparison just because he's just pretty good all the way around. I didn't see anything that was glaringly like, oh no, I wouldn't draft him. I don't think he's going to be good. I I think that he's just going to be a pretty good role player. I mean, I think that's, it is what it is. So I guess I mentioned weaknesses. I'll go into those two. The one thing that will limit him is just his lack of creativity as a whole he is good in transition you'll see a lot of these he makes pretty easy layups in the fast break um but when he has the ball in a half court set you're not really going to see the ball in his hands and him driving to the basket it's just that's not what his game is so i think part of that is he's not the quickest player in the world but um quick enough to where he can defend many positions mm-hmm. on the defensive side, but you don't really see him use that speed and it's more quickness. I wouldn't call him fast, but he's kind of his feet are quick. He moves his feet quick and I don't see him use that on the offensive side. One of the things that I, I thought was a little interesting is he shot 47% from the field, but he only shot 38% on two point jumpers, which is actually a pretty low percentage for two point jumpers. Um, when, and that was just a deeper stat that, that I found somewhere. So you talked before, and I always think it's a good point because his percentage, even his three point percentage was below average, but he had a really nice free throw percentage and he has good form. His mechanics aren't all out of whack. So I do think he has potential to at least be a league average three point and jump shooter in general. So I don't think that's a huge concern for me personally, but it's more of the explosiveness. And I think that's really going to limit him being a top end all-star caliber player. I think he's just a solid rotational player. He's going to be a high level defender. He'll do little things that don't that win you games you know he's gonna hustle he'll be in the right position at the right time but he's not gonna be the guy that you say hey I need you to get me a bucket to win us the game you know and he's not gonna drive to the basket with ease in the NBA yeah you make a couple of good points uh going on his shot it doesn't need a lot of work but if you kind of watch him his his release is a tad slow Mm -hmm. I think it, it it could be now that I think that's a I think that's a minor tweak that might not take a ton of work. The correct it's not like he needs to overhaul the shot or anything. It's maybe just like a minor tweak. And the other thing I would say about him is you fa- and you mentioned the fact that driving to the basket and not is not really part of his game. But if you watch some film. He's he had a lot of opportunity to drive to the basket because they're with all the space that was in front of him, and he just doesn't really didn't really drive to the basket. So I think if I think what he what could help him vault himself into the next category of player at the next level is be like a little more like assertive. Mm-hmm. on the offensive end not uh, that wasn't really his game in college but if he could if he could become more of a force driving to the basket I think that's what could vault him from like a role like a high-end role player to like starting to make like some all-star teams if he becomes more assertive driving to the basket I think that could uh vault him into the next category mm-hmm Yeah, and I think that's a good point. Maybe that's a lack of confidence on his end. I think sometimes that's what it is when you have the opportunity to drive to the basket and you don't. For me, I always see that as a lack of confidence. 
So mm-hmm. you know, maybe that's something that he's going to have to work on at the next level. So let's go to ideal fits. Um, this is one we mentioned him being versatile like 500 times. So once I don't know, I struggled with comparisons and with the fit because I, I think that he could kind of fit anywhere if we're being honest about it. So you really just have to look at the teams that need some uh, solidifying on the defensive side of the ball um, and teams that are maybe a little wing needy. So, you know, Charlotte comes to mind. They could use another wing. Washington could use a wing and some stronger defense. I had the Kings as well. I believe they picked number nine. That seems a little high for me. I think he's more of like a 14 to 20 guy, in my opinion. But uh, the Warriors pick 14th as well. I think that his versatility could fit in. So those are the four that I had. Charlotte, Washington, the Kings, and the Warriors. Uh, Yeah, those are all. I had the Warriors down, too. I also had Dallas down as well. Uh, I think... I think a pairing, especially with him, with him, his defensive versatility would pair up nicely with Luca's lack of defense, to put it kind. Uh, and the fact that he's excellent in the pick and roll, that could work well with Luca as well. So I just think Dallas would be another team that I think he would fit very well, especially if he tweaks his shot jumper fixes his jumper just a touch and you give him you give Dallas another if he becomes a serviceable three point option with his defense in Dallas I think I think that would be a, a great compliment to to Luka. Yeah, no and I think that's a Nice point to make as well. So let's go over to the NBA comparisons. And like I said, I struggled. So I'll just mention a few of the names that I had. Offensively, I don't think that we made a point of it enough. But I think that he can be a, I don't want to say secondary ball handler. Because I don't know if he's the strongest ball handler. But he is a great passer and has great vision for his size. So the first name that came to mind offensively was Denny Avdia, who we did a episode on last year. And that's kind of the trend. And I think it'll be cool as we do this throughout the years, as I see similarities in players' games that we did last season. So I think that's kind of fun, because as we do this multiple years, we'll be able to say, hey, no, I remember four years ago when we did one on Franz Wagner, and I think this guy compares to him. So I think that's <laughs> going to be cool throughout the years, because as much as I've always loved the NBA I you know I'm not gonna say that I've done in-depth profiles on every single player coming out so I think getting the opportunity to do this and really break down players games has been pretty cool and to share some of that has been cool as well so that's the first one that came to mind just we did an episode on him last season he had great vision and I think the way that they pass is similar um Avdia was definitely not the defender, but the one that I really liked that I saw a few people say was Andre Kirilenko. And when somebody yeah. said that, I was like, okay, I really like that one. I can see it. Kirilenko, similar size to Wagner, um, was an elite defender in his day. Offensively, wasn't the strongest, but that's why I think it's the perfect comparison. Kirilenko wasn't ever a primary scorer. He was just a defensive master who is was in your starting lineup for that purpose but he was a good playmaker too he had good vision he was a good passer so I actually really like the Andre Kirilenko comparison I think this draft season it's been interesting to me Joe Ingles had a nice season last year compared to a lot of people yeah, and it's just funny. A year ago, you know, Joe Ingles was a valuable NBA player, but I don't know what he did last season in Utah really elevated him to, you know, when you're talking about an elite level, not star, not an all-star, just an elite level role player. I mean, I think everybody's just saying Joe Ingles, but I get it. I mean, their size is similar. So, uh they're playmaking. They both have playmaking ability. So I understand the comparison, but I just wanted to say that because I think it's funny because all of a sudden everybody is Joe Ingles, and that's a compliment. That's where no one's saying that, that as a diss. Yeah, because he's arguably one of the best non All Star players in the entire league. 
in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So just what he does for your team, everything you want to see in a winning player. Then the last name, it's funny because I didn't really have any modern names, but a little bit, This the two names I came up with were Avdia and Tayshawn Prince back in the day from the Pistons. Oh, you're going back. I went back a little bit, but Tayshaun Prince wasn't a all-star offensive player, but he was a high level. He made some all defensive teams. He had good length, good versatility. They're about the same size. So that's the one that stuck out for me um, too. I, that's, I always loved those Pistons teams, which wouldn't surprise anybody, but I, uh, I, I like Tayshaun Prince too. Yeah, there's a couple, those are a couple uh good ones there. So, the first one that jumped out to me was Kyle Anderson of Memphis. Okay. Uh, the, just the way, just, just the way they, Kyle Anderson, like, is not a primary playmaker, but he can do a little bit of playmaking. Uh, Kyle Anderson is not the greatest three point shooter, but he can shoot it. Uh, he plays defense pretty well. So I think their profiles fit kind of similar. Uh, and the other name is uh, a guy that's currently playing in the NBA Finals. Uh, do you do you see the Jay Crowder comparison? Yeah, that's I think that's name. reasonable. I think that uh, you know, just in terms of being versatile, yeah, I could see that. Similar and, size you know, too. Jay Crowder is a little shorter. I think he's only six six, but a little short. But you know, Jay Crowder's also he can shoot the three, but he's not known as a knockdown three point shooter either. Yeah. He could he could kind of make it and I bet his uh three point percentage is probably pretty similar to what uh uh Wagner's yeah, he had thir- uh, he was thirty four and a half percent with the Suns last season. Oh, and he and Wagner's. Or I'm sorry, thir- he was thirty eight percent last year with the Suns, but his career he's thirty four and a half. Okay, so you know, you know, I, so similar pass. So I just think their 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 three point ability and their defensive versatility. I think you know, I think they fit is pretty similar. Yeah, no, I, I like the Jay Crowder one a lot, and that's my boy. So I'm a little disappointed that I didn't come up with that I, one. But you said, like when you said that you don't have a very good comparison, I was like, how were how was you how are you not saying Jay Crowder? <laughs> yeah, no, I like that one. I think that's a good one for him. And Jay Crowder's had a nice long career as a role player, and you know he's been a winning player. So I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like that one. So. I think that's it for Franz Wagner, though. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and wherever you're listening to podcasts. And we'll see you next time for the next episode. Yep.